Welcome to our virtual night school at the hall. Um, I want to first individually um, and collectively thank all of our panelists who have been so gracious to join us today. I know that um, like many people in this crazy time, um, we kind of uh, vacillate from what do I do with my day to, oh my gosh, I'm so busy. It's unbelievable. Um, and so to carve out any time uh, is, it says a lot. So really appreciate everybody joining today. Um, one thing I want to say is uh, we're, we're going to be kind of direct uh, and succinct, I think, today. We don't have a lot of time and everybody's time is precious. I, I think there's going to be a lot of topics we might want to know more about. And because this is pre-recorded and not live, you might have questions as you're listening at home. So I encourage you to leave comments um, and suggestions everywhere this is posted. You can also give us an email directly to the AFM office here in Atlanta. That is office at atlantamusicians.com. And let us know if there's something you want to hear more about, you have specific questions about, or if you need help finding any of these resources. The other thing I want to say before we jump into is that, um, you know, these are all amazing people who, uh, uh, many of them I know, Personally, and we have a lot of camaraderie, um, but there's no taking this whole situation lightly. And I think it goes without saying that uh, many of us have been affected by this pandemic. Uh, personally, uh, many of our loved ones, um, there's been economic and emotional strains on all of us. And this is a hard time and our thoughts do go out to those people. But I think um, to coin what uh, many other people have been saying in this period of the weirds where we are now, um, I think it's time to start thinking about how to stay collaborative and connected and creative. Um, and while we're not necessarily going to return to a new normal, um, we're gonna return to something new. And I hope that what comes out of this is a time of kind of renewed energy and creativity. And that's the spirit that we wanna talk about this today. So without further ado, let me jump in. I wanna introduce our panelists who have joined us today. Um, Matthew Kaminsky the uh, amazing organist and accordionist. And I, I love uh, promoting anyone who uh, dares pick up the accordion. So um, <laughs> he's an amazing musician. I've known him for years here in Atlanta. We share a, an intense passion of the band in our BQ, which makes us soulmates, I think. Um, but you may best know him as the organist for the Atlanta Braves. So when he goes to his gigs, it's got uh, tens of thousands of people there to hear him play. Um, plays with other teams around the Atlanta metro area as well. It's also uh, kind of a, a, a genre, um, plays in wide genres, including polka, salsa, and western swing, and is in, endorsed by Hammond Organs, which is amazing. So welcome, Matthew. Glad to have you here. It's a uh, pleasure to be here, and uh, thank you for having me on with your esteemed guests. Yeah, well, thank you. Um, what we want to do, and, and I'll come back to this, but what, specifically what's drawn me to you and bringing you in here is your amazing walk-up, uh, Braves walk-up live streams you've been doing. So that's kind of what I want to pin and come back and talk to you about. Um, also joining us, Mike Burton, saxophonist, producer, songwriter. He's a fellow board member of mine at the Atlanta chapter of the Recording Academy. Um, tours with an amazing artist, including Jill Scott and the amazing Patti LaBelle. Founder of the Good Times Brass Band, and uh, you can catch him with his latest release. It's out there. It's amazing. It's called And So It Goes, featuring his longtime collaborator, PJ Morton. And uh, we're going to talk about, among other things, uh, this video that caught my eye of his, where he collaborated with his Good Times Brass Band on the hymn, Because He Lives. Kent Morris, old friend. We met... Uh, 48 hours ago via email, and we're seeing each other in person for the first time today. So Kent, thank you for trusting me in this. Um, but comes by way of the amazing music, uh, online music provider, Sweetwater Music. Um, and he consults and teaches there, but he also has this amazing Atlanta connection. He is the lead broadcast director at In Touch Ministries for Dr. Charles Stanley over at First Baptist Atlanta. He's also a uh, very uh, experienced live sound touring engineers toured with David Crowder and just Chris Tomlin, among others. And uh, we're going to talk, um, we're going to look at some of live stream audio do's and don'ts um, around his experience there. Also joining us, Henny the Business, another fellow <laughs> board member of the Atlanta chapter of the Recording Academy, 
He's a record producer, songwriter, professor, and very experienced YouTuber. He's produced hits for Drake, Chris Brown, Kendrick Lamar, and tons of another, uh, other amazing artists. He's also a professor of music production, online branding, music tech at Morehouse College. We're going to talk about his experience with iOS apps and how to collaborate with those. So thank you all for joining us today. Um, I want to jump right in and I want to jump to you, Matthew. Um, I want to first get just a little bit of background for those who aren't baseball enthusiasts um, about what a walk-up is, a little bit of that tradition. Um, but more specifically, what inspired you during this time of isolation to do these walk-up live streams? And in doing so, like, how do you make that work? Well, what I'm best known for as the Braves organist is pretty much making fun of the other team. <laughs> so um, walk-up songs are uh, songs that I play for the opposing team when they go from the on-deck circle to the batter's box. So I get between t 20 to 30, sometimes even 40 seconds to play a song that's um, what I like to do is base it on someone's name or perhaps an incident they were involved with or perhaps someone they were dating. Um, so really uh, nothing kind of is off limits um, <laughs> with me. Now that actually uh, was part of my job description. So I've been the Braves organist since 2009. Wow. And um, my boss said that we want someone to kind of have a game within the game. Mm -hmm. So they wanted someone, so a lot of people think that was my idea, but they really wanted someone to really have that extra kind of extra game within the game. Yeah. Um, so with, with baseball being stopped for now, um, you know, I thought that I would just kind of give the fans a little bit of that from home. And I don't do it for every single game. What, what I um, do is I do it for the start of every home series because pretty much I'm playing a lot of the same walk-ups um, for each team. So, or, or for each game of the home series of the same team. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So I've been doing that so far um, uh, for this, uh, this season, and it's going pretty well. So are you following what would be our current season? Is that, has that been your roadmap for this? Yes. So, uh, you know, I, I would, um, I think the last one I played was the, the Braves were supposed to play the Mets. So I, at the beginning of my kind of live stream, I say, you know, the Braves were going to play the Mets today and here's the Mets lineup. So each team has a kind of a depth chart on their website. Yeah. And I just kind of go through that. Well, I kind of play name that tune because it's a lot more interactive well, and for so people that, on Facebook Live. And it's that part that, that really brought me in. Like I, I know I'm maybe five baseball players of all time. Like I'm not a baseball fan. Like I, I'm terrible at, at that part of the game. But the name the tune game was so engrossing because I've, everybody's online streaming right now. Like, let me play for you my new song. But I stroll i'm scrolling through facebook and i come across you and suddenly i've got a game to play and how do you when you're sitting there playing and and you're not doing that thing where everybody's like trying to read the comments you know like how do you sit there and and like yes that's right you got it mary from wherever you know this is how are you handling that part well it's really two games the way that i do it because one is name that tune because I don't say the tune that I'm going to be playing. Sure. And the next one is name the player that I would play that tune for. Right. And that's usually where I tell people to look at the roster Yeah. Uh, before I do that. Now, I started off with my iPad, yeah. which is a lot easier to read. Yeah. <laughs> but, but recently, um, recently, I've been having some uh, connection issues with my iPad. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it was working for the first maybe five times I did it, but then the sixth and seventh time I did it, um, it wasn't working as well, maybe just the, the times that I was doing it. Because I would actually specifically start at the same time the game would start at the, at the stadium. So 7.20 is usually when the game would start. Yeah. Um, so I switched over to my iPhone, which is a little bit harder to read, but it's close enough where I could actually see it without, you know, I've got my uh, Coke bottle glasses on, so. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> So I could still read it. Um, and you know what? I'm finding for some reason, because I have an um, iPhone 10s, is it? Or maybe 10R or whatever. Uh -huh. 
So I'm finding that the um, the sound is better from my iPhone than it is my iPad, which is maybe from 2000, I don't know, 2017. Yeah. So so my phone is a little bit newer than the iPad. And I think that the um, picture and the sound is a little bit better. So let me ask you specifically about that. So your sound is coming through, uh, through the iPhone. Um, are you and you're playing a Hammond organ there and that's in your house is there any amplification or anything going on or you're just it's your voice and the Hammond in the room pretty much my voice and the Hammond that goes to my Leslie speaker which you see yeah. behind me yeah um and the room so I you know I'm not as tech savvy as as you guys are probably so I don't well, have it going through a mixer I don't have any of that yeah. stuff and um, you know, my daughters will come and sing with me. They sing the anthem with me and take me out to the ball game. So, good. Um, so I've got that going through a PA system, but really it's okay. just my voice and, uh, and the organ. Well, and it works great. I mean, that's, that's, I think proves the point, uh, that is great, which is, you know, use what you have and don't stress over it, you know, because the content is oftentimes way more important than how we're delivering it. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, true. Well, beautiful. Well, thank you. Thank Mike, you. I want to jump to you. Um, you know, one of the things that caught my ear in this last week, kind of looking over the world, was um, you had put together, it was for Easter, I think, uh, uh, Because He Lives, a recording with your brass band. And that was one of, um, I'm assuming, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, it was uh, one of these recording types that I see where it's multiple screens you see and uh, audio that has been put together maybe one piece at a time rather than uh, online real-time collaboration. Can you talk a little bit about what that process was like for you and specifically with a brass band, uh, how you deal with intonation and timing and th it seems like you would really need to hear each other. So yeah. curious about that. Well, I guess, first of all, like um, I've been blessed that I've been playing with these guys for, I guess, probably 10 years now. So we kind of have a chemistry there already. So, you know, um, and we've been playing at various churches around the Atlanta area for years. So, you know, even in this time, people are still having to worship online. So mm -hmm. that's, that's also been a blessing just, you know, to have a, some more streams of income coming in, you know, yeah. people want to reach out and say, can you guys do something for our church? So yeah. uh, the, the minister of music over at Ebenezer uh, church, uh, Baptist church reached out to Melvin Jones, actually uh, the tr trumpet player. He works over at Morehouse. Mm -hmm. Um, and then he reached out to us and said, "Hey, they they want us to do this thing for, uh, for Easter. Uh, let's let's pick a hymn. You guys got any, any ideas which ones would work?" So we yeah. we're going you know back and forth on text for an hour trying to see which what's what's the right song. And I said, "Well, maybe let's do it because he lives." And um and I'll, I'll I'll be the first to say I'm not the best uh, at writing out my arrangements. I'm more like old school church guy. You know, like I can you know. I, <laughs> I definitely went to school, but I, maybe I didn't pay attention in that class. I don't know, but <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but um. So yeah, so Melvin was like, "Can you maybe give us a mock up?" You know, so I came home and just you know did like three part harmony, four part harmony by myself, just stacking the parts. And I and I sent Melvin what I did, and he's great at putting stuff to paper, man, and and yeah. um and his his arrangements so we can all be on the same page. So. You know, maybe the initial idea was some, some of my ideas and then Melvin took it and put it down and sent it to all the cats. And, um, you know, he uh, recorded his part first so we could kind of sync up with him and be in tune with the trumpet mm -hmm. part, you yeah. know, and um, and we kind of took it from there. But like I said, you know, I think our first really um, chance at doing this was last year this time. Uh, I was out with Patty Lavelle and 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 Melvin and Will who pl Will plays tr uh, trombone with us. He was out. They both were out with uh, Tyler Perry, mm -hmm. and um, so we we were in the same city anyway, and mm -hmm. and we were getting calls to play on records and do things. So we're like, look, man, we got to keep this thing going. Folks yeah. want to hear the three of us together. Yeah. So um, it kind of started with us, you know, like maybe a, a year and a half ago with us trying to you know figure out how to do this, and and we all have our own little setups at home. I'll be the first to say I'm not computer savvy tech savvy like that but i do have logic pro yeah. i would uh encourage all cats especially during this time to make make that small investment is 200 bucks yeah you know um i have a um i have a, a focus right uh interface that's not much money i got mm -hmm. a decent um con con condenser mic you know which is good for horns um 
and that's pretty much it. You know, some some, some decent monitors, Yamaha Wi-Fi. So it's not like I'm I'm yeah. spending a lot of money doing a whole lot of stuff, but I get a good yeah. sound. It's yeah. clean. Um, it's the, and the, the, the same for Melvin. I think Melvin uses Pro Tools. I think Will has Logic. So, but we so all, not even, you know. It's not all the so same. Like, you're not worried that everybody has the exact same n- setup or anything. No, nope, no. We just bounce everything down as waves. So it, yeah. it, it, it doesn't matter what program you're using. Yeah. And uh, make sure we, we, we start everything at zero so it all lines up. And even with our videos, you know, make sure we have the audio. You can hear it. Even if we, we record the video first and then we pantomime. I mean, we record the audio first, then pants them out in the video, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and we and we sync it all up, you know, like yeah. that. That's been my my experience over the last week doing some of these multi-screen video recordings yeah. uh, with the bands I work with. Um, that's the big hurdle for me has been making sure everyone starts at zero or gives consolidated mm-hmm. audio files at the end, right? So yeah. that that's a bit of a, a learning curve if you're not used to doing that. Right. Um, and it's making sure, particularly with this video side, that there's audio cues in your video track. Right. And I think that's a bit of it, like when you're, when you're doing vocals or you're doing something that involves headphones, mm-hmm. you're not monitoring through the speakers. And so the microphone that's picking up your new record or the, the video microphone right. doesn't pick up any audio except right. Being, right. So then you just have nothing to line up your video with. Right. Um, and so what we've been doing is is making sure you sort of blast the top of the track mm-hmm. um, through your monitors and then turn it off so you're in your headphones. Yeah. Um, we're true. trying to incorporate some, you know, we even did a clap on one thing, mm-hmm. you know, we tried to get real, yeah. that seemed important. Yeah. <laughs> Not knowing what we're doing. <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, for the video element of that, did you handle that or did somebody else in your group handle that? No, or? thank God they have a good uh, video ministry at Ebenezer Baptist Church. Oh, that's they, great. <laughs> yes. They took care of that, you know, but, um, but uh, we did another one uh, with Melvin Jones and he, he's also getting good at that, man, at, yeah. at doing his own editing. So, yeah. um, you know, yeah. yeah. That's this is a, a time to learn new skills. Man, so. seriously. <laughs> Yeah. Well, Kent, with that, let's let's jump over to you. And um, I know you're no stranger to this world of live streaming. It's been part of uh, In Touch Ministries' you know job description for years. Um, can you talk a little bit about uh, maybe some best practices around the audio capture for live streaming, or or, or how you approach that in your world? Well, sure. Thanks, Brandon. And it's just great to be with you guys. I sincerely appreciate this opportunity. Uh, on, on the audio portion of live streaming, anything that we're doing in the musical realm, obviously the audio is carrying the weight of it. Uh, so we do want to focus on that. Perhaps the biggest thing is to look at uh, making something that if it, if it is truly a live stream, uh, like Mike's down with Ebenezer, um, then the whole idea is let's make that a separate mix. That's the biggest thing is not take that house left or right out to the stream. Because when we're mixing for the house, we're mixing for that room. So we are mm. basically doing a mix minus the room. But when we're doing live streaming, it's a mix minus everything. So there is mm. nothing coming through that stream that we're not pushing up and bringing into the mix from the board. Uh, worst case is at least let's get a separate aux in, auxiliary sin, a prepaid auxiliary sin, where we can dial that mix up independent. Uh, if you're not doing a live event, then we can just take the entire mixer and, and present the mix for that, for the stream, yeah. mixing on headphones or near-field near monitors. Yeah. And the second biggest thing to really look for is that in the room, we have the natural acoustics of the room, whether they're, they're positive or negative, they're there. So our entire point on a stream is it's a sterile environment. It, it's a blank yeah. slate. So we have to create every bit of ambience. And if you yeah. were just to send it out, it just sounds horrific. Yeah. <laughs> it, sounds, it sounds awful. So we've got to put the verb in there and, and the effects and the yeah. processing. And it doesn't have to be anything fancy. It's the effects that are built in the board, the yeah. Yamaha NG series, it's fine. No big yeah. deal. And just bring that in and make sure that it's really, you know, not overly wet, but that it is it's thoroughly wet. And, yeah. and so we've got enough verb on there. And then the third part is to really watch our dynamics. Um, being able to control the difference in the lowest and the loudest level. Mm -hmm. And the big aspect of that is to lay in a a limiter on the top so that we know that we're not going to clip and have a distorted sound that we can work within uh, those parameters that the stream will allow. Yeah. It's interesting because that's one of the things I've been thinking about is that I've been consuming music for the past two or three weeks 
largely through online streams because I'm interested and I'm curious what's going on. And I suddenly went from listening to my music in my home through my nice big stereo system, which I love and sounds great, to listening to everything out of my laptop. And I'm just like, ooh, you know, <laughs> like, yeah. um, and, and thinking about this music as being delivered in such a way that most people are going to listen to it through their, their, their iPhone or their laptop or their you know, small device and, and what that means for dynamics, right? Because you're going to get lost if you're too precious and quiet. And of course, just like you're saying, if you overpower the signal, you're going to you just create chaos. And I think that's fascinating. So uh, going a little deeper dive there, imagining not the time now where we're completely socially isolated, but a time in the near future where live music kind of is a hybrid model, I believe. Let's say you can't have more than 10, 20 people in a venue, but the venue still wants to be active. Bands still want to play. Seems like we're going to get to this world where live streaming and a live show coexist. And it seems like in that instance, your advice is, is paramount. Now, how many of these music venues are thinking about, I've got to isolate this live stream signal so that it's unique and different and is not the same mix coming off the board. Um, I, I, I just think that's an interesting thing we're going to be facing for sure. I'm also like, why hasn't Facebook, the developers of Facebook pushed out an app like, or a part of our live streaming where you hit a button and it makes applause after these people play? <laughs> <laughs> that it's is horrifying. Yeah, right. You know, like I've, I've done a few of these streams myself, but particularly when I'm watching people and it's just like, da da da. <laughs> oh, <laughs> heartbreak. That's the worst, man. The worst. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, Kent. Henny, let's jump over to you. Like, Sure. You, you're an expert at, at um, many of these elements of technology and, and ahead of the curve here, I think. And I want to specifically point people to your YouTube uh, channel um, because sure. I think you've done an amazing breakdown on, you know, a lot of the equipment needed and approaches needed and um, the, the, almost the psychological approach you need to, to do well on, online. Um, but one of the things that you and I have talked about some that I'm just really curious about is sure. you have been using iOS apps um, yes. to make, produce hit records. And, you know, during this time when many of us uh, find ourselves sitting around trying to figure out how to stay collaborative, how to stay creative, you know, what would you push people to right now to go download, uh, understand, learn, and start using? Um, you know, like everybody else, it's a pleasure to be here. But um, yeah, I, you know, it was it was a few years ago. I just I had you know we we get to a point where we accumulate so much gear and our our workflow starts to it just starts to show our age and we're just we we've done things for so long we need to we re, we really need to try to figure out a new approach and you know I looked on my couch in my studio and I saw that iPad I think it was iPad Air two something like that and. I was like, I think this can do some pretty good music apps. And next thing I know, I was deep diving in that. And five years later, that's pretty much my primary device for all my professional needs. And, you know, for people that are just starting, I, I know a lot of us in here are, you know, music professionals, but I know there's a lot of people who, you know, maybe are, you know, musician and maybe not a music producer and the like. And I'd always recommend going to something like GarageBand. Um, specifically like on iOS, because you can do it not only on your iPads, but on your phones. And it's very capable to be able to record audio, to learn the type of instruments that you're, you know, that you want to use. If you're going to start, you know, songwriting or, you know, background, you can import your own music into it. You can use the effects, the compressors, the limiters, the verbs, and all of those. You're able to do so much with that app. And then from there, you can always, you know, upgrade in and export those files to Logic. And like Mike was saying, you know, try out something like Logic. And right now I know that Apple is giving away or not giving away, but they're allowing a 90 day trial, not only on Final Cut Pro, but on Logic Pro. Mm -hmm. And if people, you know, it, it's these times where you can really start to pick up these new skills. And so I've always started to push people in that direction and say, you know what, there, that's a great gateway into learning how to do music on iOS, because from there, you'll realize that there's a ton more plugins, apps, DAWs, um, and different organizational, you know, pieces of, of software that's going to allow you to do everything that you need 
on your mobile devices. And it really, it really just revolutionizes the way you're able to be mobile. So, yeah. Yeah. Are they developing plugins? Like you said, like in iOS apps, like are you able to put in sort of a outboard plugin, like a compressor or a whatever, or a soft synth or something like that? Yeah, I'll show you. Let me see if I can put this up. So um, <laughs> you get the tech award so, for the meeting. Uh, right. He wins. <laughs> I've been doing it. People have been on. asking me for a, for a <laughs> while to figure out how to show them how to do this. So yeah. this is program called Ecamm Live. That's what I'm doing all of this in. Okay. And uh, and a lot of people can learn how to <laughs> give themselves a applause. There it is. Oh. <laughs> There's the applause. It's literally built in from this app that I'm using on my Mac. But I'm telling you, there's so many different, like, uh, whether it's, you know, phases or reverbs, uh, compressors. And the really cool thing about a lot of these different apps is they're built by developers and are people that are just like us. And yeah. so there's a great community where you can actually build a relationship with some of these developers. And next thing you know, you're literally... Um, you're literally helping them build the app specifically to help you out as well. So, you mm -hmm. know, if you need a different type of room and they're building a reverb and it's more of a, yeah. you know, a specific room or a hall or a plate or whatever, you know, you can, the community is small enough to where, you know, some of these guys are building some of these great, great plugins and, mm -hmm. you know, you can see them and work with them and you can import them into things like GarageBand, things like Cubasis, which is a mm -hmm. iOS version of like Cubase. I use that a lot as well. So yeah, so it's, it's pretty awesome. Yeah. And I think, you know, uh, particularly a lot of our Atlanta union members, um, they're, they're playing in classical groups around town. They're, they're wedding bands, they're freelance musicians. They're, they're varied in their genres. Right. And, um, but they all likely have an iPad, iPhone nearby. Um, yeah. And it, that may seem a lot less daunting than jumping into like, oh, let me go download Logic Pro today, which again <laughs> is available right now. Apple's giving right. this license away for a period of time. It's also a, a f probably the one of the least expensive uh, digital workstations workstations to get into. Um, but it it is a learning curve, and you have to sort of yeah. you know um, sit down and decide to commit to that. Um, and yet, there's these apps, you know in our hands already that we can go out and explore. Um, Mike, jumping over to you, like you, I, I imagine your live calendar looks a lot like my live calendar right now, which is just yeah. a bunch of nothing. And you know, the, um, <laughs> yep. yeah, and, you know, many of us are used to kind of be, a, uh, we're used to being creative and active and, and um, it, it's, love making music at home, love doing that part of my job, but um, right. I'm also supposed to walk out on the stage and be adored by fans. That's part of right. what I signed up for. Um, yeah, so how do you, like, what are you doing right now, just in terms of daily life to stay creative? You know, like what's your approach? Well, man, for one, I'm trying to at least write a song, at least one song every other day, just trying to get down. I come downstairs and say, look, I'm gonna try to do something productive, mm -hmm. you know? So yeah. doing that, um, uh, you know, still have some things coming up. Like I said, the, the church stuff is pretty much almost every Sunday. We're having to arrange some horns for somebody's thing. So they, that's good. You know, um, I'm, I'm actually doing this thing tomorrow for uh, the Atlanta Jazz Festival. They're doing like a remote uh, oh, recording. Cool. So they'll be because, you know, they, they do their 31 days of jazz in May yeah. every year. So mm -hmm. I guess they'll be rolling out those performances. So I just I just found that out yesterday. So I'll, I'll be doing that tomorrow, which <laughs> is great. You know, go play some music with my friends and. That's so be specifically, fun. when you do something like that, you're going to do this remotely, I, I presume, right? Yes. Everybody in their homes. There's no click tracks in jazz, right? Well, see, but they, they have, they have a, there's a studio, so we'll, we'll go there. Oh, and, nice. And, and be six feet apart. And yeah, sure. In, in okay, the studio. good. And so we'll play like a, like a 30 minute set and get out of there. But, yeah. you know, and they, they have, you know, a lot of strict rules about hygiene and all this kind of, you know, sure. wiping everything down. And so, so it's going to be safe. But, yeah. Well, and I think that's a funny thing about uh, music studios in specific that, you know, they're built about isolation, right? Yeah. yeah. So uh, obviously audio isolation is your primary point, but um, I do think we're going to be able to slowly move into this, like you're saying, and into yeah. studios that are big enough right. that can follow the proper procedures, keep everybody isolated and uh, make music again, which is great. Yeah. So. Is Kent, great. um, I want to talk a little bit about, since you do this on a very big level, um, 
if we're starting from zero, if I'm sitting at home and I've got my, my instrument uh, and my ambition and my talent, uh, but no gear, like <laughs> what would be those first pieces of gear you would recommend if I want to say put on a show on Facebook Live next week? Well, like uh, Henny said, um, the iOS devices are absolutely amazing. Uh, mm -hmm. There is nothing wrong with, with just putting an iPhone up. One of the key elements is to get a, a tripod. It doesn't have to be an expensive tripod. Uh, Venro and a couple others make things that are under $100. And you've probably seen a little light, a little halo light, circle of yeah. light, and it has a yeah. mount. You put the iPhone in there on a horizontal basis, landscape mode, and then bring that it sits around the light. And that's, that's essentially getting you going. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, it's funny you mentioned the horizontal thing. I think this is the era where we all become aware of the horizontal, like the, the <laughs> how important the horizontal is, you know? And so like, you see everybody like videotaping when some news item happens out their front door and everybody's on vertical. And you, you see it on the news, it's got the blurred out on the side because this is our format. <laughs> that's great. Um, yeah. Matthew, I, I, I know you do a lot of teaching. Have you approached trying to teach lessons in this time? Yeah, I do about um, a dozen students. Um, it seems like to me, face uh, FaceTime works best. Ah. Um, as far as audio is concerned, a lot of my um, oh, yeah. piano, uh, teaching is piano students. Yeah. And for some reason, I don't know, maybe you guys could help me out, but for some reason, if the students have a keyboard and they use an electric piano sound, it's coming through a lot better than an acoustic piano sound. Interesting. So on my yeah. end as well, I go through my keyboard and I'll use an electric piano sound. I don't know if it has to do with the frequencies, but yeah. FaceTime, I use WhatsApp is another one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I haven't been doing Zoom as much um, because I don't have a subscription yet, but um, mm -hmm. I think those are the top two. Skype works, but I find that Skype is not um, as good of audio quality as FaceTime is. Mm. And a lot of my students, they right. do have um, Mac products or, or iPhones, so we do FaceTime with them. Yeah, sure. And have you found, you know, you've just been able to continue along or what have you had to change about specifically about lessons and, and what you're hoping to achieve because of the, the virtual nature of it? Yeah, I find that it's harder with the younger students so younger students, you have to kind of be hands-on and show them where notes are. But what I'll do is I'll have their parents actually send me a, a photo of the song that they're working on. Mm -hmm. So that helps me on my end. I'll have my um, that's great uh, my phone yeah. in front of me with their actual music that I'm looking at. Yeah. And the hardest part is actually having the parents put the phone or the iPad or tablet in a way where I can see their keys. Yes. So um, sometimes, yes. you know, they don't have, you know, they don't, they're not going to have tripods at home or yeah. um, I've actually have my um, iPad onto a mic stand over here. They're not going to have that type of thing. Yeah. So, um, so to, to get them to put a piece of furniture next to the piano or mm -hmm. a keyboard um, so that the, I could actually see their keys is, has been kind of tricky because yeah. uh, they don't want to move anything in their house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. well, that brings up another issue that I thought about too, that there are these great clamps out there that they've been making, um, you know, clamps for musicians to look at their iPads while they play and their iPhones mm -hmm. while they play. Um, and they all go onto mic stands is the design of it. But those are another great option as you're looking at tripods, because these, you know, it might be something you can sort of, you have around you that you could clamp this thing onto. Um, and you might have a mic stand at home or whatever. And they're a great addition to that where you can kind of compartmentalize everything. So. Um, Henny, I want to kind of go to you for our last little question and then we'll do a little closing, sure. but um, you, in addition to amazing work with music, you are a bit of a, a video photo geek as well, just from looking <laughs> through your uh, YouTube. <laughs> yeah. So if we were starting out again and, and, you know, we have our iPhone, we have uh, kind of the basics we need to make, uh, to get up and running, what would be that next level that you would suggest going to look at for video, photo, lighting to make things look professional? You know, um, it's, there's so many great, you know, cameras and lighting, you know, um, accessories that you can buy out there that, you know, you can really put together something if you want to step it up from your phone. 
Um, but you know, like Kent was saying, the the idea, and like you were also saying, the idea is to be make sure that you have something that you can see clearly, see clearly and hear clearly, right? Mm -hmm. um, and if somebody was to ask me, you know, I had a say I had a thousand dollars to figure out what was the best way to get. Um, you know, a, a good looking setup, I would tell them to get an iPhone 11 in and a light, you know, um, yeah. because, you know, when you have this camera here and you have the different angles, but not only it, it does very well with dynamic range and just like audio, you know, making sure the, the lower levels and the higher levels is going to give you a nice full image. And then if you stick a nice little light, like, like Kent was saying, a ring light, um, mm -hmm. uh, works very well. And, you know, even if you're recording, um, in your iPhone with some of these newer iPhones, uh, they record in stereo, but they also have a, a feature where you can turn it off to record in mono. So if you were doing more of a talking thing, you yeah. can turn it off so it doesn't record the stereo sound and it just records the mono sound and it'll give you a nice clear if you're just doing some talking parts. Yeah. But like that, you know, a good light, a good uh, a tripod. And then if you really wanted to, you know, step it up a notch, you know, there's, there's, it really would you would really go down a big rabbit hole with cameras and lenses and lights and you know right now i'm i'm shooting on a, a fuji camera with a light right here and there's yeah. a light right here and this is oh, a backdrop you know, <laughs> I know. Uh, and uh it's a lot you, you'll go down and i got this mic right here you know yeah. so all of it becomes like this whole production but what i want to tell a lot of people is if you start learning the skills and you start implementing them more and more and investing uh, into a, a new business model for yourself, because a lot of us have these skills, we just trying to figure out how to get our skills to the people. Um, you know, making sure that, you know, like, like Matthew was saying, if I'm teaching kids and, you know, uh, we're trying to figure out which, which platform to go on, FaceTime is probably going to be one of the best ways to do it because the audio algorithms between when I'm speaking and you're speaking and cutting everything off, uh, it's making sure that you're able to hear people more legibly or even like Zoom. In Zoom right here, there's a feature where you can turn on original sound. So like if we're doing music instead of voice, uh, there's a feature inside of the audio settings where you can turn on original sound and it'll get a more of a clear sound for if you're playing music. So there's a ton of ways to get started, but I tell people all the time, it's like, this is the time now if this, you know, if you're, if you want to start teaching, if you want to start showing people what you can do, find the best way to get out there and just start showing people what it is that you can do and, and start building a business from there. It's, it's the perfect time. That's, yeah. And it's such great, great words, because I think what a lot of us are, are facing is a trial, is a challenge. Um, yeah. But what I hope we can find is an opportunity. Yeah. And, and this is where technology is a great complement to this, because you look around, if this had happened to us 20 years ago, um, <laughs> you know, <Yeah. laughs> what would we be doing right now, right? Yeah. I'm a flip phone out. Um, yeah. <laughs> but I'm, I'm very hopeful, not only, you know, in the tech community that, that innovations, because we're finding the edges of, of what works and doesn't work with collaboration and songwriting and performing. Um, and this is a great boost for the tech community to kind of speed up development on these, where, where there are issues. But I think more importantly for us as creatives and for uh, professionals in this world, how can we improve what we do? and see this as an opportunity to come out of this with more skills, more knowledge, more opportunities that, uh, that weren't there before this you know, came into our world. So with that, I really just want to thank you all individually and collectively. Uh, thank you on behalf of the Atlanta Federation of Musicians on our board, our staff, all of our members for lending your expertise uh, and helping us kind of explore these things some. Um, all, all of the sites, all of the videos and music that we mentioned, we're going to put that all together in a link package. So you'll find that below these videos. And again, as I mentioned at the top, if you want more information, if you want to know more about these things, I encourage you to go out and find these amazing panelists, follow their YouTube channels, their worlds, their music. Um, but also reach out to us, leave us comments and suggestions, send us an email at office at atlantamusicians.com and we will help you as best we can. Um, stay safe. Stay creative, stay collaborative and active, but above all, be well. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you.